In the previous video of this series, we configured our PLC hardware in TIA Portal version 15.1. And in this video, we're going to write a PLC program in ladder logic for this simple water pumping system. And in the next video of this example, we will test it using the PLC simulator. If you are looking to grow your PLC programming skills, consider subscribing and click the notification bell to know instantly when we upload a video just like this one. First of all, we have to know what the logic behind this system is. In the real situation, there are some documents for this purpose, such as philosophy of operation, I.O. lists, piping and instrumentation diagrams, internal wiring diagrams, and so on. We will learn about the control and instrumentation documents and drawings and how to design and draw them in software such as ePlan or AutoCAD Electrical in future videos. In this process, the pump should transfer the water from the pool to the tank automatically. For being automatic, there should be a low-level switch on the bottom and a high-level switch on top of the tank, as well as a low-level switch in the pool. As soon as the low-level switch on the tank does not sense the water, PLC should send a start command to the pump, and the pump will start working until the high-level switch senses the water. When the high-level switch senses the water, the PLC will send a stop command to the pump, and the pump will shut down and will remain shut down until the low-level switch of the tank does not sense the water again. And this procedure will be repeated again and again. There is also one other situation that PLC will shut down the pump. This would be when there is no water in the pool and its low-level switch does not sense any water. So in this example, we have three inputs which come from the level switches and just one single output which turns on and off a three-phase electric motor that drives the pump. We have connected the PLC output directly to the electric motor for the sake of simplicity. But as you may know, in reality, there is a contactor in between. Since it will not affect our PLC program, let's keep it as it is. However, we will explain the real-world PLC control panel devices and its wiring in a future video. In a previous video, we have learned how to create a new project and configure its hardware configuration. Therefore, I just skip the hardware configuration step and open that project. In the PLC programming tab, as you see, there is an organization block by default. Depending on the program you're writing, you may need to create other new blocks or functions that you can do that from the Add New Block submenu. I will double-click over the main OB or OB1 to open it. OB1 is the primary environment for PLC programming. Before writing anything within the OB1 environment, we should add the inputs and outputs of the project and their addresses in the tag table here under the PLC Tags folder. Okay. I will create a new tag table and name it as Water Pumping System. I then open it up by double clicking on it. The first input is the pool low level switch. By pressing Enter, the software automatically assigns the I0.0 .0 address to this input, which is the first channel of our only DI card. The next one is the tank low level switch with the address of I0.1. And the last input signal is tank high level switch with the address of I0.2. Finally, as you may guess, there is our only output, which I will name it as motor-pump, and assign the address of Q0.0 to that. By defining these tags in the tag table, we will prevent confusion when we are writing the PLC program or during the maintenance and troubleshooting, particularly when our process includes thousands of inputs and outputs. Now, let's get back to the OB1 environment to start our programming. The simplest way to write this program is to use a flip-flop for starting and stopping this electric motor. If you have any alternative ideas, please share them in the comments. I will expand the BitLogic Operations folder and add an SR flip-flop from there by dragging and dropping it to the network 1. I then double-click over these question marks and will assign the motor-pump or Q0.0 to that. You may ask why SR and why not RS flip-flop. 
Choosing between the SR and RS flip-flops is the matter of priority between setting and resetting the flip-flop. Meaning that, if you want your set input has priority over the reset input, then you should choose the RS flip-flop and vice versa. I am sure that you will understand it after we simulate this program in the next video. Again, for keeping the logic as simple as possible, I assume that all the level switches are normally open switches and will send a 24 volt signal when they sense the water and they send a zero signal when they do not. To learn more about the normally open sensors and normally closed sensors and the real cases in the industry, we have provided a link to a quick tip video in the description. The only condition required for starting the pump is losing the I0.1, that is the tank's low level switch. So, I connect a close contact to the set input of the flip flop and will type I0.1 here and press enter. This way, when the I0.1 is false, then the set input of the flip flop would be 1 or true, and consequently, the pump will turn on. As the next step, I click the reset input of the flip flop and connect an open contact to that for the I0.2. To continue, I use the open branch and add a close contact for I0.0. This way, we will shut down the electric motor whenever the water level reaches the low level in the pool or the high level in the tank. That's it for this video. I saved the project and in the next video, we will test this PLC program using the PLC SIM software to see how it works. If you like this video, share it with your friends and colleagues. Don't forget to think about alternative PLC programs for this process and share them in the comments. You can watch these great videos as well.